What is up people, your boy Jab back at it again. Now today I'm doing a big run of plastic. Biggest run yet in that reactor. We're gonna put over 10 pounds of plastic, pure plastic, all at once. No catalyst, mixed, all types except for PVC and Teflon, the halogenated compounds. But other than that, we got polystyrene, polypropylene, polyethylene, polyethylterephthalate, all of that. As you see here, got some beautiful shreds. This shredder been putting in the work, mama. Matter of fact, I'm planning on getting my shredder to run off a 220 pretty soon. Right now, it just runs off a 120, so it kind of gets clogged. So I weighed the first bag of plastic I shredded up. It came out to be 3.52 pounds, or about 1.59 kilograms. After that, I had to shred up some more. You guys need to understand, okay? I say we got to over the 10 pounds, over 10 pounds of plastic. That's a lot of plastic, guys. Um, how many kilograms is that like that's like four or five kilos right that's a lot of plastic you know it doesn't sound like that much but when you're actually doing it yourself when you're actually looking at how much that is it's a lot so you see i was putting all types in there i had to cut up these bottles myself because like i said my shredder does not have enough horsepower on its own uh just running off of 120 to be able to go through these so i have to like kind of cut them in half myself by hand does kind of hurt my thumbs over time. It gets blisters on me freaking hands, yeah? So that's why I got to get the shredder to really uh, be proper um, once I can splice the junction box in. But regardless, these bottles are all PET or polyethylterephthalate, uh, which is its own type of compound. Usually when you use um, PET, they actually give you quite a bit of wax and quite a bit of water out of them when you put them in the reactor. So that's interesting to know. So after I cut them all up by hand, as you saw, we go ahead and we spread them all up in the reactor. Just like, not the reactor, my bad. The bloody plastic shredder, yeah? Uh, so, you know, other than that, once we got all those PET flakes out, all the P, the polystyrene flakes, polypropylene flakes, polyethylene flakes, like all of that poly crap, you know what I'm saying? Once we had all the polys, it was in the reactor, wasn't it? So the total weight came out to be 14 pounds or 6.36 kilos. Now I also added a gallon of motor oil here. Now I'll explain what this does in a bit, but it came out to be about 7.35 pounds or 3.33 kilos or one gallon or 3.78 liters of motor oil. So this is a, the actual reactor here and I made some modifications. I wanted to show you guys the main modification I made was I added another condenser. See that? I had one there, but then I added another Libet condenser because I noticed I was still getting a lot of oils coming after the first Libet. So I was like, okay, let me do that and then let me increase the volume, the storage capacity of the oil. So you see, I made a new oil collection tank. I had this big metal jar and the filters come after the second Libet and then once the gas goes through the filters, it's completely clean and comes out the other end. So, with that being said, now time to load in all this plastic. And as I'm loading in this plastic, let me tell you guys what the motor oil does. So, in my past reactor, we did an episode of Will It Pyrolysize on pure motor oil. Pure motor oil does not pyrolysize on its own. It does not even, it barely even absorbs microwaves. However, I noticed that if you do co-pyrolysis of motor oil and plastic, like you mix them together, it actually like yeets up the oil yield of the plastic. Like it, I don't know how it works together, but it does something to where it will boost the oil yield of the plastic dramatically. And I want to get a ton of oil out of this run. So I'm going to add a gallon in for since I'm adding such a large batch of plastic, like this plastic, once it's all filled in, going to completely fill up this container, right? So I reckon a gallon should be enough to get that effect going where it just like shoots up the oil yield and the plastic. And, and my theory to that is that's because motor oil is insulative and the microwaves, they get the plastic so hot it cracks it. So it cracks it to a point where it's a permanent vapor and no longer an oil. But the motor oil kind of acts as a buffer. It doesn't let the plastic get that hot to where it's a permanent vapor. It just kind of lets it get hot enough to where it becomes a vapor that can then be condensed into an oil. So 
that's why we're adding this motor oil. It gives us amazing results. It's almost, it almost acts as like a catalyst of sorts, yeah? Um, and like I said, the motor oil itself does not absorb microwaves. So what happens instead is the plastic absorbs microwaves, the plastic gets hot, and then that heat from the plastic transfers to the motor oil, which then causes it to break down. But it takes a lot longer to break down because it really does not absorb the microwaves at all. So we put in that motor oil there, as you see, spilled a little bit, no big deal. Went ahead, cleaned it up, and I went ahead and uh, ratcheted it down or impacted down this uh, this flange here. Then I had to push out the oxygen with this argon because the pyrolysis process is done in the absence of oxygen. So I turned on the argon and I was spinning the blades around just to get to make sure the argon went between all the bits of plastic, everything, all the oxygen was out. I did my flame test to see if a flame could survive the output tube and it really couldn't. So at that point, no more oxygen in there or very little. So now let's turn it on. Now at this point, I do want to let you guys know I had a major issue. Literally, as I, after I spent so long setting up everything, like it took me the whole day to shred all that plastic and get this thing started, a magnetron broke. Like it literally would not turn on and I was just pissed. I'm like, I'm going to run this thing anyway. So we only had two magnetrons. Literally two thirds of the power of, that we normally have. But as you see, regardless, the gas output was crazy. Now, I lost track of the time because I had to run this at night time until I fell asleep and I had to stop it. I started it again in the morning, but I forgot to stop the timer. But 28 kilowatt hours consumed so far. And at this point in the run, two magnetrons, almost no vapors being formed anymore compared to before. Uh, I'll tell you from running to this, uh, with only two magnetrons, the internal temperature never really got up as high. Um, the pipes never got as hot, so I'm sure we got a lot less oils. some nonsense it's literally a solid piece of freaking plastic dude what is this what in the Lord's name <laughs> what, the, what the actual <laughs> look at this it is a solid piece of it is a briquette of freaking solid plastic are you kidding me Wait a minute. No way, dude. No way. What the fuck? I mean, it's almost like wax. Like, look at that. It's almost like wax. But this is... <laughs> this is the most interesting thing I've seen all day. <sighs> what in the actual hell? Never seen such nonsense in my life. I think it's because of two... Only two magnetrons on, just not enough heat to really get this to um truly break down. I mean, just let's just be honest. We put so much plastic in here. We need as many microwaves as possible. I've never had this happen before, but I've also never only used two magnetrons. God damn it! It's literally like wax. Look at this nonsense. What the fuck? Fuck! 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 fuck. Thing is goddamn clogged. It literally expands all the way to the back of the freaking reactor. Just a whole, like a, like a molten or like a, a frozen lake of freaking plastic wax. Are you kidding me? What is this? The blades. <laughs> the the blades are legitimately like frozen in place. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny though, I won't lie. It's, it is kind of funny. It is Alright, what we're going to have to do, right, is we're going to get uh, a third magnetron. I'm going to scrap it out of a microwave and we're going to... We're going to get rid of this... <laughs> we're going to we're gonna fix this, but Lord, this is the most interesting thing I've seen. I mean, look at this. It's like wax, 
but then when I actually like fill it I can tell this is plastic it has like wow so I guess this I guess it's true like the plastic really does become molten in the reactor I mean clearly look at this talk about incomplete carbonization the crazy thing is you saw how much substance was left in there we got a lot of products we got four yoga balls and we got some oil too um, now let's collect it out of this new oil collector let's see what we got oh look at that would you look at that that oil actually looks pretty good I'll say so myself and something I can see that you can't see is you know when you um like open up a, a can of gasoline and there's like those vapors those invisible vapors that you can see I see those and it's kinda terrifying because that lets me know if I strike a a match around here a, li a, a lighter something could blow up because like I literally can see them out the output tube of this, this flammable vapors so yeah this is definitely a really good product we got here so this speaker is kind of dirty it had some dirt in it but in terms of the product the quality of this oil take a look see how it's like orange like that Just look at it ha as I um, pour it back in here it's like golden uh, that's really good I wonder why the quality changed so much between then and now was it the amount of plastic was it, on, was it the fact that we only use two magnetrons was it like what was it honestly every time I make, get big changes is always when I'm using like four different variables so I don't know what exactly gave me the change that's my fault uh, would I consider this run a fail? No, I definitely wouldn't. Um, I would just consider it like a learning experience as well as crucial data. Don't run this thing with only two magnetrons because even though they will get energy out of the plastic, they have trouble breaking down all the plastic. You feel me? They just It's not enough energy going in. Like I said, despite that, we did get a ton of energy out in terms of the yoga balls. I mean, I can hear there's quite a bit left in there. That's what I'll do. All right. I'm trying to make sure you could see it. There we go. I'll kind of prop it up. Yeah, there we go. So I have it propped up, leaning this way towards the valve. And let's see how much. Oh, so it seems like that's more of like the water there. You see how cloudy and milky and dirty that is. So that's more water product there. Interesting how the oil came out before the water, right? Usually it's the other way around, yeah? Shame, because it was so clean and golden before, but now it looks disgusting. But this is the reality of the situation. Water can be recovered from plastic waste, clearly. So that's all that is right there. Contaminated water. We'll